people sometimes talk about trigger warnings and uh, a trigger uh, for me uh, is sometimes the question, what are you reading these days? And it, it seems odd uh, to say that because I read a lot, I like to read, I like to talk to people uh, who are readers, but it's because in the context of where I grew up, there weren't a lot of readers. And so sometimes the question, what are you reading, had a subtext of, is that a sign? If it's not a sign, why in the world are you reading this? It's just seen as, seen as weird. Um, when I think about my own life, I think about how much of a role fiction uh, has played in my life. From the very beginning, from comic books, uh, with a sense of narrative, and a sense of mythos, a sense of continuity, uh, to reading as a preteen, uh, Charles Dickens' David Copperfield, which rang true to me uh, in, in so many ways, some of the things that, that I was experiencing in my life and some of the people that I would encounter in my life. Right now, much of what I read is lots of fiction, lots of, of poetry, uh, and, and some things have been especially uh, meaningful. Uh, I think of, uh, at a very difficult time in my life, uh, rereading uh, Dostoevsky's Brothers Karamazov, uh, that line, water the earth with your tears, and love those tears, that, that comes back to me uh, repeatedly. Uh, the writings of Wendell Berry and Marilyn Robinson, uh, helping me to, to learn to love and to find beauty uh, in the ordinary. Neil Gaiman, uh, I, I read a lot of his works. Uh, William Faulkner and, and Eudora Welty, my fellow Mississippians, uh, mentioned Dostoevsky and Anton Chekhov, his uh, short stories. Flannery O'Connor, Walker Percy, Wallace Stevens, John Updike, many, many people uh, in terms of fiction have played an important uh, part in my life. And sometimes people will say, well, why should I as a Christian uh, read fiction? It seems like a waste of time. At one level, I hate to even answer that question because it's not a utilitarian sort of answer. Well, you read fiction in order to get X, Y, and Z. We're a storytelling people, Fiction brings joy. That's reason enough. But I will answer the question. A lot of the people who say, well, it seems to me to be a waste of time, a lot of them hold to a kind of sola cerebra understanding of Christianity, that propositions form this theology, we have that in our cognitive structures, and that's enough. Or they'll hold to a kind of moralism that says you go through and you sort of mine out moral uh, stories or axioms, uh, moral axioms or truths out of a story and then you have the gist of the story. That's not what's going on with fiction. Uh, sometimes people will say uh, fiction creates uh, empathy and then you will have uh, studies from social scientists that will come in and say, well, it actually doesn't. Uh, you, you don't have any increased measurable empathy for people who read fiction from people who don't. Well, in response to that, I would just fall back on one of uh, Neil Postman's rules for becoming what he called a loving resistance fighter uh, against the kind of anti-culture that we have around us. And it's this, he said, be skeptical of behavioral and social science research, especially when it flies in the face of common sense. I think that applies here. Reading fiction is not a means to an end. Uh, algebra uh, will help you to learn to think logically and, and orderly. Uh, other things can do that, but, but mathematics can do that. Uh, reading fiction, I think, uh, can cultivate the imagination. And why that's important for people who are Christians, other than just the common human joy of it, is that that's the way the scripture itself speaks to us. It's the kind of world that God has created, not just axioms and propositions, but instead a, an imaginative formation. When you're reading uh, fiction, you're reading a storyline, it puts you temporarily into a different sort of world, a different sort of, of creation, and that can cultivate what uh, Russell Kirk uh, used to call the moral imagination. So it's not just that you're reading these these truths and saying that's true, that's false, that's good, that's bad, but you actually experience surprise or disgust. You know, you, you, you read about Cinderella's sisters and there can be a visceral sort of response to that. Now that can work either way. That can work in good ways or, or bad ways. I mean, Germanic uh, Volk myths uh, had devastating uh, implications uh, in the 20th century. But 
Uh, but narrative can work in a good formative way as well. So uh, think of, for instance, Proverbs 7 uh, and 8. You've, you've got the telling of a story that can show you the tragedy of walking in the way of folly and the joy of walking in the way of wisdom. Uh, you think of uh, Jesus uh, when he's telling the stories of the uh, prodigal son and the good Samaritan. What he's doing there, and with many other uh, parables as well, what he's doing there is exactly what the prophet Nathan is doing with King David after, uh, after David's uh, sexual misbehavior with Bathsheba. Nathan uh, comes in and what he's trying to do is to go around the hardened conscience and around that rationalizing intellect that can justify anything. And he allows David to experience horror and disgust and a sense of uh, righteousness and, and, and a sense of injustice, and then he flips it around to where he can see that actually applies to him, to his own sin. Well, that's what Jesus is doing too. I mean, you think of the Good Samaritan. He allows the lawyer uh, that he's talking to to experience a sense of justice and of compassion for someone who's defined to be an outsider, and then he turns around and explains it. Well, that's the way it works. I mean, the, the Ten Commandments come to us in the context of a narrative. I am the Lord who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. There's an entire story there that the Ten Commandments come out of. Uh, Sermon on the Mount uh, comes out of an entire story of the announcing of the kingdom, of this uh, year of Jubilee, this, this year of the favor of the Lord that Jesus is unveiling. Well, why is that the case? It's because John tells us in the beginning was the Word, the, the logos. That's not just logic. Uh, that's a story. That's a, a word that shapes and, and forms. Uh, the Apostle Paul pays very close attention uh, to, to narrative. The Gospel writers do too, even when they're not uh, quoting Jesus. Uh, the fruit of the Spirit, uh, Paul says, well, that's, that is a literary allusion to some very rich narrative uh, material in the Old Testament. Jesus does the same thing. I am the vine and you are the, the branches. We serve an endlessly creative God. And uh, when we're reading fiction, we see a flash of that. Uh, there's a, a writer by the name of uh, Sven Burkertz, who whose writings have, have meant a lot to me. Uh, who talks about the fact that life, reading fiction, helps us to understand that life has a goal, not just disconnected moments, that life has an endpoint, that life has a goal, and that that's necessary. And that narration claims significance. It's not just a list of things that happen, it's a way that those things happening fit together in a sense of meaning. So for me, uh, reading fiction helps me to do what uh, Frederick Beekner calls listening to your life, uh, realizing that your life has a plot and learning how to pay attention to those things, uh, learning how to put things into a perspective, uh, learning how to see a presence uh, lurking behind a, a, a sub-creation. And that's, that's worth doing. And so if it's not a trigger for you, I'll just ask, what are you reading? Uh, let me know in the uh, in the, the comments below. Uh, you, you may be somebody who will say, well, uh, I don't know where to start uh, with fiction. And what I would say is, read what you like. Go to the library, read audiobooks if that's what you like, get recommendations from other people, read for a little while, and discard it. Don't, you don't have to finish a book. If you say, this isn't for me, it's not for, for you. Do it the way you would a sport. Uh, now, you'll enjoy basketball more if you practice, and learn basketball, but you can tell, ah, water aerobics isn't for me, I'm gonna try something else. Uh, but try different things until you find an author that you like or a genre that you like, and then uh, engage with that. And it doesn't matter if you don't remember. Uh, I used to feel guilty that I couldn't sort of regurgitate out what the plot was uh, with everything that I've, I've written. Again, Sven Burkert's uh, was helpful to me in saying uh, most of what we read, the work is done subconsciously. It's again, not a list of axioms or, or truths or propositions. It's a sense of cultivating the affections and the conscience and paying attention. That's worth doing.
Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Do you agree? Do you disagree with what we talked about today? Let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know what you'd like for us to talk about in the future on this channel. And don't forget to like or share this video if you found it helpful. And make sure that you subscribe and hit notifications so that you can get all of our new videos when they release.